a red Mazda, red Mazda, two occupants. We're at Fairfax and 21st, Fairfax and 21st Street, notify the city. Hold on, baby. We're on uh, Gordon and 20th, Gordon and 20th. They're getting ready to bail out. There was five of us involved in the pursuit that led us through the city uh, streets of Richmond. And we apprehended the subject after probably two or three minutes being in the pursuit. It seems a lot longer when you're in the city. 972, you trying to call me an answer? We got some uh, crack out of the vehicle right now. How much was that? Number? Seven, seven, eight rocks? It's, uh, yeah, probably about, uh, eight ball. Look like $50 rocks, probably. Oh, okay, more than that. Uh, probably $400. $400, probably. well, maybe about seven, eight rocks. Go ahead, since, since you got that, go ahead and search the rest of the car and see if you got anything else in there. He was arrested for reckless driving, attempt to elude, possession with intent to distribute crack cocaine. There was no injuries involved in the pursuit from our end or their end. And everything turned out okay. We get them all the time up there. Very seldom they get away from us that night. The suspect was charged with driving without a license and possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. Bail was set at fifteen thousand dollars. We're headed to um, Manchester Avenue off of the um, Harbor Freeway. What we have down here is um, evidently there's an event at the Forum. And they have uh, pedestrians selling T-shirts off the freeway. It's a bad problem there lately. 5-1 Victor's going to be down on the streets, surface streets, if they go that way. 70 Mary will stay up on the freeway and will uh, roll up this way and back me up here. I know they'll run. They did last time. Five 2 where's your 20 now? Getting off in Manchester. Are they scurrying now? UTL right now. No, they're at the bottom. I got them down at the bottom. Oh, they're running, right? Affirm toward the street. Which way, but I got the t-shirts. Also went down the street the other way too. I got all their shirts. What do they look like? Uh, black male adult teenagers. Or not teenagers, but young guys. Some are halfway down the street. They threw all their t-shirts in this parking lot right across where I came out of. If we locate them, we locate them. I know what they look like. If we don't, um, we've, we've got the evidence. We'll just have to monitor the off-ramp. There's the hats. We hurt them. We got their uh, we got their shirts and their merchandise, and uh, hopefully they won't be back on the on ramp again in case we come back again. And so uh, we just need to clear the on ramp. Need to keep that away. You can't stop traffic like that. It's a major congestion. The T-shirts and hats were confiscated. Later that day, the vendors returned and were cited by the Los Angeles Police Department. They face fines up to two hundred dollars. We're just making a stop on a motorcycle, you guys see the maximum speed limit. Let's try about 80 miles an hour. Here he goes. Sent out a 93 uh, pursuit. Yeah, we're going to be in pursuit of a uh, high-speed motorcycle. We're going to be eastbound 91. We'll be approaching Gypsum Canyon. 
Looks about at Cole Canyon right now at about 120 at a number one lane. I didn't even get a good description of you. It's a, it's a red motorcycle. He's wearing a black jacket, black helmet. Black the license plate on the rear is slightly uh, oxidized there. You see him still? Yeah, he just went over the hill. We can't get around this car. We're going to be screwed. There's a bridge here. Son of a gun. Hold on, guys. That's the 71, we can't get off. He'll go over to Green River. Down. We'll get off at Surface Club. Santa and I, three, we're gonna exit the freeway at Surface Club to see if we can find him, but um, we can we'll take it off the right now. It makes you so mad. These people know to yield to the right, they never leave yield. All units turn into Indian normal traffic. Something broken. 93551, we're gonna get off at Green River. Which way do you go on? Uh, Tell him we'll try to hit him off at a service club. And follow that street around, that's a street he's on. Copy, we're gonna get off at uh, the service club to see if we can find him. Yeah, we're getting off the Green River right now. Yeah, take a right on Green River and follow that street around, that's a street he's on. Copy. Now we don't know which way he went. There's two streets he could have went. He could have stayed up, went up the mountain, or he could have went down the Sewell Street here that just parallels the freeway. We're going to try this one that goes down along here. It's a lot less traffic for Because he thing. slowed down a lot. We got something. Probably something. Dude, it got rid of that thing that was below our car. Whatever it was, we just lost it. There he is, there he is. Oh. Careful. Hold on, guys. I'm gonna go over the curb here. Get it. Cat, we just passed him. We're going back after him. You behind us? 86 to 93 and 551 information. The street that runs parallel to the 91 is Green River, and then it turns into Palisades Drive. Santa Ana. Uh, 93, that's affirmative. We're, uh, we got him in sight again. We're on Palisades Drive heading eastbound. Did you see him shut down there, that son of a biscuit eater? We begin in Miami, where the Florida Highway Patrol has just been alerted to an armed robber. There's two vehicles chasing each other, and uh, we have an individual that's on a cellular phone calling it in, and that's where we're en route to right now. Okay, I'm at 7-5 uh, in Miami. Yeah. Well, we got several units. Coming to it. This is not the vehicle. Okay, Joe, I'm 1097 at uh, with a black Bronco at this time at the uh, two and five nine. Okay, apparently uh, these people have been involved in an armed robbery right now. We're trying to figure it out. All right. Why is your mama caught chasing you? Because he came over the house and he started giving me a hard time. Where's the times. house? My apartment's on um, Harbor Island. Where? Harbor Island, North Bay Village. Okay. So he came over. The chase started. And 
he was giving me a hard time and he was pushing me around and everything and I knew what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So I just went to do it. And he was chasing me because he wanted to, you know, to catch up to me. What, what is he going to catch up to you for? You, you still haven't told me that. You got to do with drugs. No, it doesn't have to do with drugs. Okay, well, it has to do with the fact that I use drugs. I don't know what I was doing. I just woke up off drugs, you know? I mean, I just... You woke up drug out? You don't know that yeah. you were driving reckless? I knew I was trying to get away from him because I didn't want to get hurt. Very good answer. I mean, I was just trying to go to the best place that I knew of. And I asked my girlfriend to come with me so I could, so she could take the car back. Your girlfriend has no idea what's going on. Is she high on drugs too? No, she doesn't do any drugs. She, does. she has no idea what's she going does. on, none whatsoever. Well, she doesn't want to incriminate herself anyway, I guess. Oh, you know? okay. I mean, why should she? You I put, I put her in this. You two people. I put her in this, you know? The okay, officer who saw the, the two cars chasing each other, and he's driving the Bronco, of course. The victim is saying, there's a victim in the other car that's saying it's a, it's a 29, but we don't know yet. We have to wait for him to come over. Okay. And he's going to come over here now? Yeah, he's going to come over. Okay. It was a hump. Yay, big. They went flying across that, across 79th Street. So what's she telling you, man? It can't be. Ain't no way. Well, she's saying that she doesn't know what's going on. Dude, was probably so high up on dope right now. That's the way she was sitting in that truck riding, man. I thought, you know, I thought it was a robbery, the way they was doing. And the way that guy was on the cellular phone talking about it, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's something more to it than what they tell it. This is the individual that was chasing the truck, uh, was calling the police on a cellular phone and letting them know which way they were coming and going. What kind of robbery is this? Um, Mom robbery? No, he broke in. He busted the chain on the door. The first day, I don't know how he got back in yesterday unless he took the glass off. He was living with you? No. He's saying that you was following him because he wanted to turn himself in. Well, that's you what, wanted to turn himself in. You yeah. wanted to turn him in before he did. No, he's been saying for the last week. He's been yeah, right. in and he, he won't go? No, he won't go. He showed up at my house uh, the day mind. before yesterday. He wanted to borrow money. Yeah. And I had let him sleep in my house one night and all that. He, you know, I was going to take him in the next day. And so he wanted to borrow money, and I said no. And he left, and that was the day he robbed me. How many did he take? You know, he, well, the first time he took my CD player, my guitar amp, and a tape deck. And then yesterday he came back and took about three or four hundred dollars in change. I don't know how much it is. It's the change that I, you know, when you get home at night. And um, you know, I'm not out. All I want the guy to do is get in treatment. I don't care about my stuff. If he's got the pawn tickets where he hocked it, I'll go buy it back. All I really want is the guy to get help. If you guys got enough to get him in and to keep him locked up. We really don't have anything on him except... Well, he ain't got no driver's license. Traffic, license. traffic. Traffic license. right now. Well, he, man, I, I saw him running stoplights, red lights. And, as far as traffic, he's going in. Yeah. He's yeah. going to go to jail reference traffic. But that's uh, not going to hold him too long. What's going on right here is the individual that's in custody here uh, burglarized this gentleman's uh, residence. Uh, the other gentleman is trying to get him some help because uh, he's got a real bad drug problem, and he recognizes that, and he's telling me that he wants some help, that he really wants some help. Um, so what he did, he burglarized this gentleman's house, and I guess this gentleman, all he was doing was just following him to try to get him to stop so he can turn himself in and so that he can get some help. And the female that was with this individual here in this vehicle that was being chased, the passenger, the passenger come to find out uh, she's got a warrant also, uh, okay. so she's going to go down to jail. It, it's sad, you know, because, you know, you take somebody that you trust or you think that you trust under your wing, and in turn, they turn around and, and, and steal from you. They, they take your property from you. And uh, so it's an, it's an unfortunate situation. The suspect was charged with burglary and grand theft. He faces a possible 35 years in jail and $15,000 in fines. The female was arrested on a previous warrant. The suspect's friend recovered the stolen merchandise. For some time prior to this incident, the friend had been trying to help the suspect deal with his addiction to crack cocaine. <laughs> First to Massachusetts, as troopers Mike Fiore and John Tasca confront suspected car thieves. What we're looking for now is the uh, white holes being operated in this particular area right now with New York tags on it. And uh, it's a good possibility that's coming right in that direction at this time. Get him up! Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Man, we had him! Just got lucky here. Uh, Boston PD is advising they have that vehicle in question located in a driveway in Columbia Road about uh, 
two, three blocks from where the incident uh, occurred. So we're going to roll up on them now and see what uh, what exactly we have down there. That's a black male, and more than likely, uh, he went from the rear of uh, right by the Columbia down ramp to uh, Dorchester Ave diagonally uh, in the direction southbound. 334 kilo. of scruffy beard and on his uh, upper right cheek he has a uh, fairly large mark on his face. Trooper Tasker is uh, about two blocks from here on Dorchester Ave, right in the vicinity where that suspect was lost on foot and uh, he believes he has him in sight. In the, in the car. Where's your ID? Huh? My ID is at my house. Yeah? Yeah. Where's your house? Yeah. You got nothing else on you? No. What am I supposed to have on you? What's going on here, buddy? What's this? Knee brace? Yeah. Please take it easy with my leg, please. Let me see that. You got no ID on you? No, my name's I live in Street. I've been down Harry's all night and I'm walking home. Yeah? Yeah. Stay right here. Let me see that shirt you got there, bud. Right, me? Let me see that shirt you got. Believe it or not, that shirt I just picked up at that gas station right there. You did, huh? Yep. 30 seconds ago, that gas station. And ask those white boys that were standing out there. They'll tell you that I thought it was one of theirs. They're playing kickball. I think this is the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right, me? What are you looking for, drugs? Nope. Looking for you. What do you mean That's what I'm looking, looking for. for. Put your jacket on, pal. You didn't just pick that jacket up. You were wearing it an hour ago. I just picked this jacket up at the yeah. gas station just now. You asked them, there's some white yeah. boys, right? I'm not running any place, buddy. I can barely walk. But there's some white boys playing, playing kickball right there. They can tell you. They're playing kickball We're going right to go back there. to, uh, you want to transport them? Yeah. Take them back transport to Evelyn Court for identification. Where? Right where we're going, pal. Buddy, you all are making a very serious mistake. Right? Hold on, yeah. hold on. One, nine, three, three. Number one, can you tell me what the hell you are you are charging me with or whatever the case Stole is? Stole a motor vehicle, okay, and you try to run both of us over to get away. My Listen. friend. I think you're making a big mistake no. there, fella. We're not making a mistake at all, okay? I'm making a mistake. Listen, if I thought there was I any question down. in my mind, Take it okay? Ready? If there was any question in my mind, yeah. you'd be walking away right now. Do you well, understand? I think, I think there okay. should be a question in your mind. There is no question in my mind. There you were the guy I described, and this is the jacket you, you were wearing. You and the guy I just, I just walked here from You're under arrest. All the way downtown. That's the guy. Oh, well, he went by. I got a good look at him in the car. That's definitely him. Yeah. The it's, that, it's the marks. It's definitely the marks in that jacket. He's just too noticeable. I mean, that's that's the description. That's the jacket, and the mark in his face is very prominent. When we drove the first time, he took his hat off, and he held it under his arm with the jacket bundled up. And when we looked back and he saw us coming, he stuffed it down his sweatpants. And he held it like this and just kept walking like this. So. Mm. You knew, you knew that was what we were looking for. I think you're making a mistake. Listen, I am making no mistake, my friend. No, I mean, you're under you arrest. You have your rights to say what you're saying, but okay. I'm telling Listen, you, you're making a mistake. I am not mistake. making a mistake, Please okay? don't put that in my stomach or anything. That way. No need for that. Listen, I'm telling you, huh? <laughs> there's no need for anything, all right? What I'm saying to you is you are making a mistake. No, we're not making a mistake. How do you figure that? Because you are the same exact guy that I described my an hour ago wearing that jacket, your scruffy beard, and your mark on your face. Well, see if I will notify uh, Boston. Stole a motor vehicle, failure to stop, and it'll be the um, probably going to go with two counts of the assault. 
uh, with the vehicle because he wouldn't stop for us. He was trying to jockey around us. Uh, all right, I'll get started. So, all right, all right, he's lying through his teeth. The suspect was arrested for stealing a parked car, failure to stop for a police officer, and two counts of assault with a dangerous weapon. Known for using several aliases, he has a record of arrests for child rape, shoplifting, robbery, and trespassing. He is free on bail and is awaiting trial. Yeah, so far we have a uh, record of a rolling 417. A, uh, a lot of distortion. Reach parties following actually in front of the party that's Guy supposed to be pointing the supposed weapon coming up from behind us now. In fact, here they come now. There he goes. Catch up with the RP. RP is behind us, the red pickup. So far, the guy's going along with the program. That's only 127 and uh, S5, SCVSO is aware of the situation. If anyone is. Step down and turn away. Step out. Step away. Place your hands above your head. Back up towards the sound of my voice. Back up towards the sound of my voice. Come on back. Come on back. At the uh, same 1020 at the stop. Yeah, for you and the RP are at the 1020 at the stop, uh, right off there from the first stop, 05. Thank you, Roger. LA 506, code 4, one in custody, code 4. Yeah, he either, either has got it hidden real well in that van or he's... Okay. He was what small, small black? Uh, uh, which, which hand? Right, right, right. right. So he's out yeah. the window? Is That's the window down? No, no, yeah, the window, the window always was there. He's got this bubble uh, glasses, yeah, like that. Then I passed him. Okay. And then when I passed him, I'm thinking it's a slow car. Mm -hmm. He's not going to make that one. But he came and passed me. When he came and passed me again, yeah, then we played the cats and dogs. Okay. And then you got the license plate, and then when your car call could get through, I could, you called I again. only barely saw his license plate because I couldn't get behind him. Uh -huh. He didn't let me go behind him. See, what he's stating is that you're pointing a small black revolver. Okay. Small black. Did you point anything at him other than your finger? Sir, I'm just trying to do it. Yeah, I, I haven't. I didn't point any weapon or, or anything of that nature at him. Okay, what did you point at him? I'll go ahead and start heading that way. I went like that. With his finger, what? One finger. Right. Okay, and what were you trying to imply by that finger? Like, Gary, you're, you're crazy or something. That's all it goes is a 45 going up the grapevine. And he's waving me with the, you know, he's got a big old Ford 38 and he's, you know. What's going to happen here is I'm going to fill out this certificate from release from custody. I'm still going to write a report about everything that happened today. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be on file at our office for a year. He's the guy that went like this to me. You know, oh, I didn't know what to, he was. Just try to calm down. You take these calls very seriously, though. You can understand that. Next time I'll get a car phone and I'll get somebody in trouble, too. I mean, you know, that was uncalled for. We leaving a... Oh, give me a break. Okay, uh, he's free to go, correct? Yeah. All right, officer. You take care. A uh, thorough search was made. Since there was no weapon turned up, there's no weapon or there's no charges that can be pressed against the suspect. So sent on his way, and this is one of those situations where you may never know if it really was a gun or or if it's just a finger. Although the victim said he saw the driver brandish a gun, none was found. The office of the California Highway Patrol receives hundreds of calls a year about people shooting guns or brandishing what appear to be guns. In the state of California, there is no law against an individual pointing or gesturing their hand as a gun. Happened. As you work your beat, let's see how you do. First to California, where the highway patrol is in pursuit of a carjacker, a growing criminal phenomenon in our nation. LA S8, I am behind the carjacking vehicle, eastbound I-10. 
under the 710. Four, I stand by by eastbound 10 under the 710. 10 4, looks like we're taking Fremont off. Get me Montebel uh, Monterey Park or Alhambra PD. 22, David. Taking Fremont off and turning south. 10 4, turning south for Fremont off from the westbound 10. LA just put out a uh, carjacking that occurred. Pasadena Freeway at Orange Grove. Second Ford probe past us was the one. Followed it, waiting for uh, some units to catch up to us. Didn't know if he was heading for uh, home or territory familiar to him. We are now northbound. I don't know the street. On the unknown street. Our last street given was a right to We're yielding. I have a PD unit behind me. You are yielding, and you do have a unknown police department unit behind you. Put your hands on the windshield. LA, we are on Edgewood, north of Hellman. We are uh, in felony stop holding for another unit. Who are you with, guy? Cal State LA. Cal State LA. I have Cal State LA 97 with me. There appears to be only one person in the car. I cannot tell if it's male or female. I take for one occupant only in a vehicle at this time. Unknown if it's a male or female. I think we only have one right now. Driver. Take the keys out of the ignition with your right hand and throw them out the window. Very good. Now, reach out with your left hand and open the door. Kick it open. Kick, kick it open. Good. Put both hands out the window. Step out. Step out. Both arms, straight, yeah, okay, stop, right there. Is there anybody else in the car with you? Good. Now, turn around, all the way around, all the way around, back up, towards me, back up, towards me, keep coming. I was sort of shocked to see him coming out all bloody and, and beat up which I think played to our advantage because uh, he wasn't going to try anything. He just wanted medical help. Now, go Okay, now, whoever else is in the car, come on out. Come on out. Come on out. You on him? Code 4, 1 in custody. Start 111.41. I think uh, we just couldn't leave you out here. Him. Couldn't leave, leave you out here, base up. Where do you want to put him? Ah, just set him on the ground. I'm going to have an ambulance look at him. Okay, and what happened here? I was down there, sir. Huh? Down when uh, 7 11 right down. 50 seconds. Yep. With my friend. Uh huh? Suddenly some trolls just came up to me while my friend was in 7 Uh huh? And he just jacked you know, through my, because I was sitting in the car, so he took me off, so he stabbed me and stuff, and he took me off, took off with me in my friend's car, he just threw me off, and he thought, he stabbed me and stuff, and he started beating me up, mm -hmm. and that's when I was bleeding to death, so he dropped one of his guns, so he was throwing me off, and then I was scared I was bleeding to death, so then... I had no choice, so I just had to... You took it off from a guy in the freeway? Yeah, you took what? it from him? Okay. He got a good stab. Okay, you just sit tight there, okay? Do the vehicle. Let's see if we got a gun in there. Uh, yes, there is, sir. There is? Is it loaded? Yes, sir. Whose is it? One of those Mexican guys, sir. One of those Mexican guys, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. I don't know if this is the suspect or the victim yet. The suspect on this contact may only advise it was a bail agent in the late 10-4, that's him. We got him. Uh, he's been stabbed. That's why we have ambulance here. 
I asked him whose car it was, and he says he took it from a guy that he got off the freeway. I was getting off the freeway because he was bleeding so bad. So it sounds like he got his fanny kicked, took the car so that he could uh, get away. Men and women of the Highway Patrol and State Police Agencies of America, thank you for watching.